All right, I'm battling it out on the GTX 1060, and we are, <laughs> well, in a actual battle for both frame rate and against these kinds of creatures. Uh, in my last video, some people were like, test out something more demanding. Okay, well, here we go. Last video was testing out the RTX 4090, so if you missed it, take a look at that one. Anyway, we're at 1080p, 100% resolution scale. We are not upscaling at all at this point, and we are on the ultra settings. And while I was just running around the beginning of the game and watching the cutscenes and all of that, uh, we were well over 30 FPS the vast majority of the time. Um, once I got into this combat scene with all sorts of effects going on, um, I uh, did notice some dips below 30 FPS here, but I did want to say that it does seem like playing the game at native 1080p uh, targeting 30 FPS does seem completely reasonable. Now, we could drop the overall settings quality down to high and see if that helps us stay above 30 in combat. So let's go ahead and do that. And it does look like that did a nice job. Now I realize that not everybody's targeting a, uh, you know, around 30 or more FPS target, especially on PC. But if you're playing on a GTX 1060 at this, you know, 2023, you might not be the most, um, the biggest stickler for frame rate and all of that at this point. Um, of course, also, you, you might want to be playing closer to 60 FPS. So we're going to go down through the settings a bit here, go down to medium, and then we'll try out low, and then we'll also try out some resolution scaling. Now, it looks like the bad guys are gone, so we're going to actually reload that save real quick um, because I want to get kind of apples to apples comparisons here with the, uh, with the combat happening. So it's looking like here, at the medium settings, we are very, very playable. I mean, it's not a locked 60 FPS. If you have a variable refresh rate screen, this is probably more than acceptable. And if you're just not that picky, it's completely fine. So let's go ahead and try out a bit more adjustments. Let's go down to the low settings. And once again, in this combat scene, we're still below 60 FPS. So basically, it's looking like in demanding scenes, even going all the way down to low, you are just not going to be at 60 FPS locked all of the time um, on a GTX 1060. Now, there are easier scenes in the game, for sure. So the other option here um, is to instead of just lowering settings, or you know, instead of lowering settings at all, you can also upscale. Now there's various upscaling algorithms available in this game. It has DLSS, but obviously the GTX series of cards do not support that. However, AMD's FSR2 is supported, Intel's XESS is supported. Uh, these are temporal upscalers. Um, and then AMD's uh, FSR 1.0 and Nvidia's NIS are very similar technologies that are spatial upscalers. Um, Basically, uh, the temporal data that's used in something like FSR2 can usually get a better reconstructed image with a little more performance overhead. Let's go with uh, FSR2 at the quality setting, but with the, um, the graphic settings still at ultra, just to get us a comparison here. Now notice what, what this is doing is it's actually gonna render the game at 720p, but then use temporal data, things like that. This is very similar to DLSS. Um, to try to output an image that looks a lot like native 1080p. Now I will say that FSR2, especially at lower resolutions like this, does not output an image that's identical to a native 1080p. It will be a lot more fuzzy, especially in the particle effects, uh, the character running around in motion. Uh, so if you look for a little fuzziness in the details, you will notice it, but you'll also notice that we're at the ultra settings now, and we are in the mid 40 FPS range, which feels a lot better than dipping into the like 28, uh, you know, FPS type that we saw at the native 1080p Ultra. Now, that being said, you could upscale more aggressively, but I don't think that makes a lot of sense. But this does go all the way down to balanced performance and even ultra performance mode. Going down to performance at 1080p, like at 4K, it can look sort of reasonable. Um, the lower your base resolution is, 
the, the worse this looks. So FSR2 performance at 1080p is only a 540p image. So this is a 50% on each axis, so a total of one quarter of the actual pixels, uh, and then trying to upscale it. FSR2 is a pretty good upscaling algorithm. Um, now, YouTube will crush some of the details, but I think that in motion here, we're definitely seeing a lot of, um, a lot of aliasing. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, load up the save to the combat again here for some more benchmarking. But as I was saying, I think the FSR2 performance setting is just too, uh, too fuzzy. I think there's better image quality compromises to make. I think at the quality setting, it could make sense. Also, it's still not actually getting us to 60 FPS at the ultra settings, right? So I think what's gonna make sense to do now is kind of mix and match. So if we go down to the, um, if we go down to the high settings, oh, let's apply that, and then upscale less aggressively. Let's try the quality setting, which I think, again, looks a bit fuzzier than native, but at a more acceptable level. Let's go ahead and see what we get here. So now, at the high settings plus FSR2 quality, seems like the frame rate's pretty good. We're still not hitting that magic 60 FPS number, but we're getting pretty close a lot of the time. Like I said, there's a lot of particle effects and characters on screen in this scene. I haven't played enough of the game to know if this is the most demanding scene in the game, but I have played enough to know uh, it's more demanding than some of the other uh, earlier scenes in the game. So let's go ahead and drop down to medium settings. And once again, this still has the FSR2 quality setting applied. And let's see where this gets us. Okay, it seems like we are now actually hitting that kind of magical uh, 60 FPS type number, which really isn't that magic. Uh, what I'd like to play with now is, so if you were on a 60 FPS 1080p monitor and you were just shooting for an absolute locked 60 FPS experience, we could try a uh, 60 FPS uh, cap uh, with these settings and see how we do. See if we're able to maintain a perfectly locked 60 FPS. And actually, I think we've done it, guys. That's a pretty smooth frame time graph. We're locked to 60 FPS. Uh, one nice thing about frame rate caps is the GPU utilization doesn't need to go to 100%. And that means that we can... Um, uh, as I'm talking here, I'm gonna go ahead and reload the combat so we can test that out some more. Anyway, so it looks like we've found one way of achieving a locked 60 FPS. So it looks like FSR2 quality uh, with the medium graphic settings and 60 FPS is totally achievable. Now let's go ahead and remove the frame rate cap because that was just because some people might want to do that. But now let's see how far we can push the performance if we go ahead and um, go down to the low settings and keep the FSR um, upscaling applied. So we still have the FSR2 uh, quality setting. We're now at the low graphic settings. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we're not gaining enough from going down to low for it to make sense going down past the medium, in my opinion. But yeah, we can see that we can still get some pretty good performance here. All right. Now, just for fun, why don't we test out some other options? So again, FSR2 is a temporal upscaler. Um, there's always NVIDIA's NIS or AMD's FSR 1.0, which are honestly very similar in performance and image quality. Uh, which are spatial upscalers. They don't have the temporal data. They rely a lot more heavily on edge detection and sharpening, things like that. Um, but let's go ahead and see what we can do at ultra settings with um, NVIDIA's NIS because it has less performance overhead than the, um, than the FSR2 upscaling. So we might be able to get a higher frame rate with a difference to the image quality. So um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn on a average frame rate counter here. Looks like we're kind of mid 40s, mid 40s with those settings. I'm actually curious how FSR 1.0 
uh, performs compared to that. So if we go FSR 1.0 quality, let's go ahead and uh, reset the frame rate counter. Uh, if there's any performance difference, it's small enough that I don't think it makes too much sense to draw a big conclusion off of. They both seem to be producing results in the mid 40s. And now let's go ahead and compare that to the FSR2 at the quality setting. Again, I'll reset the frame rate counter. Yeah, and you can see that we're at a significantly lower frame rate. So FSR2 quality definitely produces a better image, but at a higher, um, at, a, at a lower frame rate, right? So you could play around with those to your preference, but I do think the overall image quality due to the temporal data available in the FSR2 upscaling algorithm, I think makes the most sense there. We can try out XCSS, um, but in other games I've tested it out in, it performs worse than FSR2, um, so doesn't end up being that worth it. Okay, looks like here, uh, well, I think we should probably reset the, um, reset the combat so we have all the characters back on screen before we, uh, we call it on the performance difference here. Okay. Well, might be performing slightly better than FSR2, actually. If so, it might actually look a little bit better, too. It almost seems a little less fuzzy to me in the um, in the output we're getting with with all the uh, um, what do you call it the 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 disocclusion that kind of stuff. So actually, I'm I'm pretty interested in XCSS as the option here. I was not expecting that. So let's see about what if we went down to the uh, lower graphic settings here with XCSS enabled. Maybe we'll go down to the medium graphic settings, see where that gets us overall performance wise. Reset the frame rate counter. Okay. Um, looks like I let myself die because I was looking at the frame rate counter, so there's always that. <laughs> anyway, let's try again. It's looking an awful lot like we could get around 60 FPS with uh, medium settings with XCSS quality, which is very interesting. You know what? Let's go ahead and compare this to uh, FSR2 quality. Reset the frame rate counter. Okay, actually it is looking like FSR2 quality may be giving a better better frame rate. Anyway, it'll be interesting to play with both options, though. I actually feel like I am getting a better frame rate now. It looks like we're mid-70s with the FSR2 quality at these settings. And then if we go back to XCSS, I think we're going to drop down into the 60s. Well, pretty similar. Interesting results. All right, so I think my conclusion here is basically that uh, the GTX 1060 can absolutely play the game at either 30 FPS with the settings pretty much native ultra with maybe a few dips below 60. Go down to the high settings if you wanna stay above, si uh, uh, sorry, a few dips below 30. If you wanna stay above 30, uh, seems like the high settings make sense. Uh, again, ultra did dip below 30 at times. And then if you want to shoot for a more like 60 FPS experience, it seems like the medium settings uh, with either FSR2 or XESS quality seem to be giving me the best results. And you could kind of play around with those and see which image quality and performance you prefer. They seem fairly similar. And I'd like to test out uh, some other GPUs in this game. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some of that. I hope all of you have an excellent day.